Texas A&M spring football game is coming up here in a few Saturdays, and the number one breakout candidate to watch for is Des Ricks. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked on Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked on Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Hope everybody had an outstanding weekend. And, you know, the spring game's coming up. Some teams have already had their spring football game. Texas A&M's is coming up here in a few Saturdays. And, you know, we're going to get more into that game, talk about more surrounding it. But the first thing that I want to discuss about it is who are some players that can break out? You know, when we get closer to that game, we'll talk about, we'll predict MVPs, predict stats, predict uh, what some rosters look like. We'll, ha- we'll have all those conversations. But I want to talk about some players who I think could break out. And the number one player on that list for me is the Alabama transfer at corner Des Ricks. You know, a player that had a ton of hype coming out of high school, five-star player gets to Alabama and, you know, he's young, doesn't get a ton of snaps because Alabama has an outstanding corner room. You got Kool-Aid McKinstry, a lot of talented players in that secondary in that secondary room, in the corner room. Uh, you got the Caleb Downs, safety, a lot of great players there. So it's tough to get out in the field, kind of like how we talked about with like DJ Hicks at Texas A&M, the defensive lineman, super talented kid out of high school, but he got buried behind a dominant defensive line. So Des Ricks is a good football player with a ton of great play left in front of him. I don't think just because you didn't see him on the field a ton last year, it means, oh, this guy's not good. It just meant he was buried in the deep room. So the video I've seen of Des Ricks so far it's been practiced, the things I've heard, I think he has a huge game ahead of him, and I do think he'll work his way into the starting lineup for Texas A&M in the uh, secondary playing corner. The upside is just so there. I mean, you've got some of these other transfers are those they're the they're the floor plays. Des Ricks is the ceiling play. He has so much talent, and I think you're going to see him really break out in this game. I think and I, I I fought myself over not saying Will Lee because I feel really good about Will Lee as well at corner, but I just think Des Ricks is just going to end up being better than Will Lee, and I think Will Lee's going to be a great football player on the team who could start. So. Des Ricks is my number one, you know, breakout candidate for this spring game. He's going to have a great career at Texas A&M. I think he does end up winning a starting job, and I'm really stoked to see what he's going to be able to do, especially knowing the issues Texas A&M had a year ago in the secondary, especially at corner. Got to get it fixed, and Coach Elko did that immediately. He walked on campus and plugged that hole when it came to going to get really good secondary players. And I think Des Ricks is one of those guys. So he's my number one breakout candidate for this game. Number two is a guy who we've talked some about over these last few weeks, and that's Micah Tease. The more I hear, the more video I see, I think we're going to continue to see the Micah Tease hype train get get on the tracks. I think he's a great player. I, I Once again, last year, you got Anaya Smith, you've got Evan Stewart, you've got Noah Thomas, you've got Moose Muhammad. You don't have you have a ton of talented receivers. He got buried as a youngin. I think now he's been in the program, new coaching staff, new system. I get that, but he's been here, he's been in college football, and I think he's going to get some legitimate snaps this season. I, I, I'm really excited about his upside. I just think he does it all at the wide receiver position. I think he's a guy that's going to be a really good college football player and will move on to the NFL down the road. So, you know, I feel pretty good about Jay Walker, Noah Thomas, and Moose kind of being the guys at receiver this year. But Micah Tease, watch out because he is going to find his way on the field. Whether he takes over one of those guys as a starter, i would be honest, I'd be a little surprised if he did do that. But it's not – if. I went in a time machine and we're in October and Michael T's is starting. I wouldn't be surprised. I think he's got a ton of upside. So 
I think this is a game where he could break out. And, hey, you know, I think that we get excited about Noah Thomas. We get excited about Moose. We get excited about Jaday Walker. But at the end of the day, if Micah Tease has taken one of those players over, what that means is he's just really good. It doesn't mean they're really bad. We know what all of those guys have. It means he's really good. So I don't think him working his way into the starting lineup is a negative for Texas A&M. So Micah Tease is another guy to pay attention to. And then staying on the receiver trend here, I've got Jabri Barber, the transfer from Troy, a yard away from 1,000 um, last season, played a lot of college football, a lot of meaningful snaps, and I think he's going to have a great season and a great spring game. I think you're going to see him be a, a name like Tease. Same thing as I talked about when I went back and forth with Des Ricks and Will Lee, I kind of went back and forth here with Tease and, and Jabri Barber. I think both of them could – end up working their way into a starting lineup. That's how talented they are. I think you could have gone either way with those two names, and I would have been surprised. But Jabri Barber has more experience than Micah Tease does. He has more experience at the college level, at the Division One level. You know, Troy was a really good football team last year, and he was a huge part of the reason why. So Jabri Barber is another receiver that could break out. And same thing, the whole time machine move in the future. I could see Barber being a starter potentially. And, hey, he took somebody – he took over a good football player. That's what what's, could potentially happen. So one of those two guys is going to break out and perhaps both break out. I mean, that's not outside their own possibility either. So um, those are two names to monitor in the receiver room. I've got another one that's a little bit bold, especially as you every day or here at Locked on Aggies know I am the CEO of – Connor Wigman, I think he's going to have an incredible season and an incredible career. But I like Marcel Reed a lot. I I, I think he's going to end up winning QB2, and I think he's going to really show off in this game. I think Marcel Reed's going to – I'm not saying Connor Wigman and Jalen Henderson are going to play bad. I'm just saying I just have this weird feeling that we're going to leave this spring game with a little bit more of a is there a serious battle for quarterback one conversation because I think Marcel Reed is going to really show up in this game. Uh, which is, and the sample size w- was limited. We didn't see a ton from Reed. It was just the bowl game. He, of course, comes in because Jalen Henderson goes down with the um, arm fracture. But what we saw against a pretty good football team in the bowl game was this dude can play. He wasn't scared. The moment wasn't too big for him. He came in and shined. And I think that, listen, it sounds like all these quarterbacks love and respect one another, which is great. You know, you want, you want it to be a healthy competition, but, but a competition. And I think Marcel Reed is, is, is he wants this job. I mean, you know, and that's not rocket science. Obviously he's not there to, you know, this isn't blue mountain state. He doesn't want to be the backup, but I do think that Marcel Reed is going to get his name in this conversation more than I have given it credit to this point. He's a, he's a dude with a ton of upside with the legs, with the arm. I was concerned about the arm talent, but he proved it in that bowl game in, in, in a tough spot. He wasn't expecting to have to go out there. And then literally the first play of the game, Henderson gets hurt and he gets launched out there and he shows up and plays a dang good football game. So the moment wasn't too big. And, and that's what you need out of your quarterback. And for a true freshman to do what Marcel Reed did I think the sky is the limit. So I think that if he has a, a huge game in this spring game, he could put a little bit of pressure on Connor Wigman. And pressure is a good thing. Pressures make pressure makes diamonds. You know that's what we want to see. I'd love to see Marcel Reed push Connor Wigman to make Connor Wigman better. So I think Reed's going to have a good game. And once I'm not saying Jalen Henderson won't have a good game, but I just think Marcel Reed is going to really turn some heads in this game and have folks going, maybe there is a legitimate quarterback battle at Texas A&M. So Marcel Reed, I do think that Ruben Owens is going to have a breakout game. When I say breakout, I know he played a lot of snaps last year. And listen, when I'm saying breakout, I'm not saying Nick Scorton or um, Moose Muhammad. I'm not saying, or Connor Wigman. We're not saying those names. We all expect them to play well. And if they did, I don't think we would consider it a breakout game. These are guys who we maybe aren't considering locked in starters. So, and I think Ruben Owens is probably the most likely to, we'll probably get the most snaps of these names listed here, but I think that he's going to have a good game. I think that the leap he's going to have taken from his freshman season to this year is going to be quite large in that old 
be seen on the field. I've seen some videos. He looks fast. He looks great catching the football. He looks shifty. Not to say he didn't last year, but he was a freshman. He missed some holes. He he would know, you know, he knows that. Everybody, everybody could see that, but that's what you do. You learn, you develop as a college football player. You learn from your mistakes and you don't make them again. And I think that that's what's going to be the case with Ruben Owens. I, I think you are going to see a really big spring game out of him. And then I think you're going to see him and Le'Veon Moss be the dudes for Texas A&M this season. So I'm excited to see how that plays out. But I think these guys are breakout candidates. Give me a breakout candidate in the YouTube comments. And once again, I'm not saying Nick Scorton, Connor Wigman. I wouldn't consider that a breakout. Give me a name that we're not discussing a ton that you think could really show up in the spring game and surprise some people. So let me know that in the YouTube comments. We've talked some about how easy – Texas A&M's schedule is going to be in 2024. And they ranked SEC schedules, and I don't totally agree with it. We'll have that conversation coming up right here on Locked On Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. So speaking on this schedule, We've discussed, as you every day are here at Locked On Aggies know, we have discussed how an easy is not the right word. I think that it's it was the word used in this article I'm going to discuss, but easy is not the right word. It's SEC football. I mean, on any given day, Vandy can give you hell. I mean, it's I mean, you know what I mean? Like that's the reality of SEC. Every team you're going to play every single Saturday is a competitive football team. So nothing is easy in this conference, but compared to some other SEC schedules, as I always bring up Florida, compared to schedules like that, Texas A&M's is quite easy, manageable, whatever term you want to use. So looking at the schedule, Notre Dame at home, McNeese at home, you head to Gainesville to play the Gators, Bowling Green at home, Arkansas at the neutral site. Then you got Missouri at home at Mississippi State. You got LSU at home at South Carolina, New Mexico State at home at Auburn, and then Texas at home for what should be the showdown of the college football year. And looking at the schedule, so opponent record a year ago was 83 and 63. This was better than some schedules, worse than some schedules. But looking at this, what makes the schedule easy, and, and this wasn't mentioned in the article, and that's why I kind of took exception to it. What wasn't mentioned in the article was the fact that of where these games are played. It, it, they based a lot of this off opponent record from a year ago, which is a valid argument. I'm not saying that's not a valid argument. But what I am saying is where you're playing these teams matters. As we've discussed time and time again, you play Notre Dame, Missouri, LSU, and Texas at home. Those are your four most challenging games of the season. Not even a debate. And you get to play all of them in front of the 12th man, 100,000 screaming Aggie fans rooting you on to victory. Like that is what you're going to have here. And that obviously matters. And it wasn't mentioned. So this schedule was ranked 10th easiest so that, you know, there was six ahead of it. And I just don't, I, I don't see that being reality. I think that this is one of the most manageable, simple, easy, whatever you, term you want to use schedule in the conference so you avoid and in, in the article they said you avoid georgia you avoid alabama and while that is true of course you don't have to play either of those teams you also avoid ole miss who i think could end up i think ole miss will be better than alabama this season i believe that right now i think georgia is still going to be georgia but i think ole miss is going to be incredible this year i think they'll make the college football playoffs so 
avoiding those three teams is what makes this schedule so manageable. And where you play the teams you play, your difficult games are all at home. I get, I'm not saying going to Florida and going to Auburn are, are going to be easy games or not. But if you find a way to win those two games and steal one of those four games at home, you can win nine football games. You could potentially win two if you win two of these games that you're probably not supposed to. So, and I think the point of this conversation, while you know, we've discussed the schedule, of course, time and time, time and time again, but the reality here to me is, is win now. Because what's going to happen next season? This is going to flip the teams that you're playing in Kyle Field. This year, you are playing on the road next season. So you're going to have trips to these places. You have to go play Texas on the road. You have to go play LSU on the road. These are not going to be easy football games to, to win. So win now. It'll help with recruiting. Recruiting's in a really good spot right now. We feel great about recruiting. We feel great about where it is. We feel great about where Coach Elko is taking this program. I think this class, this 2025 class, is getting ready to hit the ground running. Of course, you got to commit last week. I think some more are going to continue to pile in as we get closer and closer to June and July. But the schedule, I just think is selling your vision for this program will be much easier if you win eight or nine football games this year. I, and I'll tell you, I mean, if you win seven games, it is a huge disappointment. If you win eight, I would say that you probably hit what you were supposed to. But, you know, all of the betting websites, what do they have Texas A&M's win total set at? Eight and a half. You have to choose higher or lower. And, I, you know, and, and it's hard to say this. It's hard to say it, but it's it's reality. And I think many would agree. I'll be a little bit disappointed if you don't win nine football games. And I always tell people this when they ask me. They'll say, just another crazy Aggie fan saying they're going to be great this year and they're going to end up not being great, just like every other season. The difference here is this schedule. You know, you, if we were playing Bama in Tuscaloosa, Georgia and Athens and Ole Miss and Oxford, I, would I be sitting here saying this? Of course not. I would not be saying that. I'd say you win seven games, great. You aren't playing those teams. Your schedule is manageable. I think that you're going to be the underdog in four games and in maybe at Georgia, at Auburn. So worst case scenario, six games. And I think all of those lines are going to be, you know, minus two and a half or Texas A&M will be plus two and a half, three and a half. Like it's not going to, these be pick them games. It's not going to be when Texas comes to town, it's uh, Texas a and M's plus 10 and a half against tech. That's not going to be the reality. So you have to take advantage of this. And you got to win now. I think it's going to be hard to sell that vision if with this schedule you go 7-5, and five, even if you win a bowl game. I just I don't think that is going to help you sell this vision. So win now, don't win later. I think that's going to matter. I, I don't think – I think recruits want to see that. Top talent continues to commit to Texas A&M, which is great. But at the end of the day, that could stop if you don't start – winning football games if you don't start doing what you are supposed to do which is winning eight nine ten football games on a year-to-year -year basis competing for sec championships competing for national championships with the money this program has that is what you should be doing every single season is competing for national championships and we really haven't seen that and it's frustrating i know fans are frustrated i think that you have to believe this coaching staff can really change that narrative for this program. So you got to feel good about the schedule. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to see where this year goes. It wouldn't be a fun season if you had this transition and you did have to go to Athens and Tuscaloosa and Oxford. Like this season would, would be a bit of a throwaway if, if that was the case. We're going to get to see fun football played in the first, in the first literally season of the Mike Elko era. So that is exciting to me. And I think Texas a and fans should look forward to the season because of the schedule that we are going to see. So, you know, that's something I'm monitoring for sure. But this is a manageable schedule where Texas A&M can win nine football games if they play well and do what they are supposed to do. The Aggies get the series win in Columbia against the South Carolina Gamecocks. We will talk about that coming up right here on Locked on Aggies.
The Aggies get it done on the road. I didn't have a great feeling about this series just because, South. once again, it is the SEC in baseball. We talk about what the SEC is in football. What the SEC is in baseball is another level, another level of how good it is. And every team's competitive. I don't care. You know, Georgia hasn't been great. Missouri hasn't been great. They will go and compete against every um, Big Ten, Pac-12 team. They can go compete right now. That's how talented the SEC is, top to bottom. So when you go and you take down a ranked team, you beat them 2-1 in the series on their home field, you got to leave feeling pretty good about yourself. So game one, uh, well, the Aggies, they are now 8 and four in SEC play. So eight and four in SEC play, you'll take that with a pretty tough start. I mean, you got to go to Florida. You got to go to South Carolina. Auburn comes to town. It's not been, Mississippi State, it's not been the easiest opening schedule, but the Aggies have handled it well, well above 500. And you're putting yourself in a really good spot to host a regional if you just keep winning football games. Um, so in game one, the Aggies win nine two. You had 10 players with a hit in this game. Hayden Schott goes two for five with three RBIs. And what I loved about this baseball game is you punched them in the face early. This is what we were begging for. We were saying, please punch them in the mouth. When you're playing a good baseball team on the road, you want to punch them in the mouth early. And that is what the Aggies did in this game. They score seven runs in the first three innings. When you do that to a home team, it deflates the team. It deflates the energy in the crowd. It really takes the air out of the building. And that is what Texas A&M did when they played in Columbia this weekend. So that was a huge way to get going in game one. And then, of course, Prager goes 6.1 innings of four-hit baseball, two runs, 12 strikeouts, four uh, base on balls, one hit by pitch, so five free bases. You will take that all day long when your starter gives you 6.1 um, innings of four hit two run baseball. I mean, you you're gonna win the way Texas AM hits the ball. You are gonna win a lot more baseball games than you are going to lose if you play like that. So the bats were great, the arms are great, and you get a huge win. Winning game one is always important. If you win game one, you're one win away from a series win. Taking game one is so important. That's why it, it's sometimes it's tough. It's tough to win to win a series if you don't win the first one. You got to go back to back wins. So that was huge to go in, get this big road win over a talented baseball team, and find yourself one win away from a series victory, which, of course, then they do secure the series victory on the following game. You win that one 6-2. And once again, four runs in the first three innings, you punch them in the mouth. Punching a team in the mouth when you are playing on the road, as I said, it deflates the energy. That was huge. So shot, once again, one for five, three RBIs. Jason Lavalette, two for four with an RBI. Monty, two for three with two uh, two walks. And then um, Seda out of the bullpen, 4.1 scoreless innings, three strikeouts. You will take that one free base. You will take that all day long. When your bullpen can come in and shut it down like that, that is going to win baseball games, and that is what happened securing the series. Now, this is where some can get frustrated because maybe they'll go, well, you win the series. Let's go get the sweep the following day. The Aggies aren't able to get it done, losing the series finale 6-5. USC returned the favor, punching Texas A&M in the face early. Um, and despite you know a late push, the Aggies weren't able to end this ball game with the win and the series sweep. But you get the series win, which is what matters. Have a weekend. Um, Hayden Shaw had three for four with th uh, three RBIs in this game incredible weekend for him. So how many hits did he have? He had six hits on – he had – yeah, he had six hits and a handful of RBIs. Great weekend for him. Um, Ted Burton was two for three in this game. Lampkin got hit around a little bit. Uh, 3.1, six hits, five earned runs, two walks, eight total walks in this game. And once again, that that's a losing recipe. You cannot walk a ton of players because you will lose games doing that. And that's what happened here, but you win the series and that's all I ask. You go on the road, you win a series, you're going to be a really, really good baseball team. And that is what Texas A&M was able to do in Columbia. So huge series win eight and four in SEC play. You got to be feeling really good about this team as we are nearing the midway point of SEC baseball conference play. 
That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Aggies. Thank you all so much for being here every single day. I really, really do appreciate it. I hope everybody has an outstanding rest of their day today, and we will see you tomorrow.